So guys, make sure you're taking care of yourselves. And remember, what you do now is going to affect you later, right? I had this conversation with a lot of bodybuilders out there. Um, and a lot of bodybuilders, obviously, in this last year um, have died. And it can be for all different types of reasons. Um, but I have known a number of different bodybuilders through the years um, that I've been here at Titan and beforehand that have died from these different things as far as kidney failure, liver failure, um, you know, having strokes, heart attacks. And it's because they're abusing themselves to a certain extent right now. And it's that whatever it takes attitude and giving yourself these different things that are causing the health issues, not maybe now, but later on down the road, when you really, really want to enjoy life, possibly when you got the family, you got the job, you're not, you know, you're not having to do as much crazy stuff as you used to when you were younger. You really want to enjoy those older years. Maybe you have kids. You know, it's it's a sad thing when I know people that are younger than me, and I'm 40, and they're in their 30s and they're dead, and their family is still grieving, and they have kids and a wife and everything that they're leaving behind, and it was all because of what, right? It was because they wanted to be big or they wanted to be Mr. Olympia, but they had no chance in hell to be it, but they still had the whatever it takes attitude. Um, it's a sad thing, and I, I feel for those people that have lost loved ones because of it. Um, so just check on these things. And if you're seeing your your liver or your kidneys start going down the tubes, that should be your wake-up call, man. Like, hey, listen, I need to stop this, and I need to look at what I can do to get myself better or at least get this under control. Um, and that's what I'm telling you guys. Blood test, blood test, blood test. Um, that's the biggest thing, whether you're doing testosterone or any anabolics or you're not. Make sure you're looking after these things because even if you're not doing any anabolics or steroids or anything like that, performance enhancing drugs, you have to look at kidneys or you have to look at high blood pressure or glucose levels, sugar levels. There's plenty of people out there that don't exercise, that don't do any types of PEDs, and they're the ones that have diabetes type two, or they're those ones that have high blood pressure, and those are the ones that are gonna have kidney damage too as well. It's a silent killer, guys. So true, as a young man, I used to take a lot of gear ever since Titan, I take less and feel just as good as not better. Hulk, I, I'm right there with you, man. And you know, I think that's that's the biggest thing, right? Is uh. I think the more younger you are and you're, you're coming up, it's like that Superman mentality. Nothing's going to hurt me. Nothing's going to kill me. I, I'm just impenetrable, right? And as we get older, we understand this, that, hey, listen, we're not. You know, that's just that's a mind, mind game and a mind trick that we plan ourselves and that we really need to look at this. Uh, we're talking about steroids and some of the negative side effects from steroids or people that abuse themselves with different things. And it doesn't have to be steroids. That's another big thing that I want to bring up. If you abuse yourself with anything out there, you're going to probably cause damage, right? And this could be abusing Tylenol. This could be abusing alcohol. This could be abusing drugs of any sort, right? Whether it's um, painkillers or it's, you know, it's anabolic steroids or PEDs or whatever it may be, even sugar. We eat tons and tons of sugar. You're setting yourself up for diabetes type 2, right? Or being pre-diabetic and you don't want that. So just remember, whatever you're going to do, do it in balance. And if it's a negative thing that you know is negative, then you really, really need to look at, is it really worth it? What's the benefit and what's the negative side effect of it? And really decide, is it really worth it for me? And is it really worth this little piece in time um, that you're going to be so shredded for a, t a day or two um, that it's really, really worth it? So you, you really have to take that in consideration. Some people say, I don't care. Um, until they're dying, right? Or they're, they're hurting or they're in a, a no comeback situation. Then they're really, then they really care. So at that point, don't get to that situation. Uh, what do you think about pro bodybuilders taking four times the amount? Now is this four times the amount of testosterone, Brooklyn? Um, so when we talk about this, you know, I've seen bodybuilders do all types of things. And not even just bodybuilders. I've seen athletes do all types of things. Now, bodybuilders that I know that are really trying to get up there, right? They're trying to put some real, real size on. You know, like like Hulk Squad was talking about. I was talking to him about this earlier, and I've had this conversation with Drew when he first came on to Titan. It's all about quality, not quantity. So there's only so much your receptors are going to, you know, be able to take on from whatever you're taking into your body as far as testosterone. So those anabolic receptors, those androgen receptors, you know, when we talk about those things, we need to look at, you know, what's the dose is going to be and how much can we really take and utilize and how much is really going to benefit us. 
So when we look at this, listen guys, usually 200 milligrams to 300 milligrams a week is going to take you way above and beyond um, the normal range for a male as far as total testosterone. And even as far as free testosterone, it'll probably go right through the roof as far as where the reference range is at. Now usually with a total testosterone for um, like LabCorp, it's like 960. You know, for Quest, it's like 1,000 I think right now, right around there, 1,050. So you're probably going to end up about 1,200, 1,500 on 200 milligrams to 1,500 mill, or excuse me, 200 milligrams to 300 milligrams. When you start getting to 400, 500, those aren't that bad. When we start getting to 800 to 1,000 to 2,000 milligrams a week, we're talking about overdoing it, guys. Um, I, I don't think you're going to get more benefit out of doing that much more testosterone. And we're just talking about testosterone right now, right? Um, they take away, yeah, that's true. Um, I think there are guys at the gym that take steroids. There's definitely guys at the gym. I hope that's not, nothing new there, Ronnie. <laughs> this is true. It probably is. But, you know, when we start talking about those, those um, super physiological doses, right, that's what we call them. We start taking that much in. I don't think you're going to get benefits like you think you're going to get. You're not going to. There's only so much tissue, lean tissue, lean muscle mass that you're going to put on every year. Um, and ask some of the big pros out there. I don't see any of those guys where they say, oh, I gained 30 pounds of 30, 30 pounds of lean muscle tissue. It just doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. They might, they might gain weight. That's a whole different story. Pounds and lean tissue, lean muscle tissue is a whole different story. So we really got to look at these things. I think other things will uh, help as far as, you know, protein synthesis and, and rebuilding muscle recovery. I think that's another big one that people really don't um, look at as much as recovery. And they don't put as much effort into recovery as they do as breaking down the muscle or training or, you know, when it comes to that eating. Um, Sleeping is obviously another factor too as well. But I think those are the big things that really you, you need to take away with it. I, I, I think quality over quantity. I think that, you know, if you take two or 300 milligrams a week, you're probably going to be pretty good. You're going to definitely make some gains. You know, I see some guys that are taking more. That's fine if they want to do that. But when you start getting up to the grams, and I'm not talking about Instagram, but I'm talking about 1,000 grams, 2,000 grams and such, I think it's way too much. Um, I don't think it's good at all. You know, I even seen this thing where, and I think, you know, the bodybuilding federations and the sport in general needs to take a look at what's going on. Um, I think they need to crack down to a certain extent of what's going on. Uh, I think they need to be more responsible as far as telling the athletes that it's not okay to do what they're doing because I, I think at this point that we're encouraging athletes to do this and encouraging athletes to say, hey, listen, you got to be the most freakiest guy on stage, the biggest, most freakiest dude there is. Uh, and what does that do? In the mentality of an athlete that says, hey, listen, i got to be better than that guy on stage. I'm willing to do more than that guy on stage. I'm willing to train harder and do more gear or eat more, whatever it may take to beat that guy and to be bigger, more freakier. Uh, this is happening over and over every year. Every year it's gotten worse and worse, in my opinion. Um, I'm not looking down or saying anything down about it, but I do think that we need to take a look at this as um, a health industry, as a fitness industry altogether, and say, no, it's not okay. Um, and, and have some sort of standard or some sort of line where we can't cross. Um, I just think that's a big thing. That's why I, I tell them all, I'm like, listen, do blood tests. 